Okay, guys, good morning. So um, I'm going to read John 14 through 17. And um, I'm going to actually do this video a little different. I'm going to read the first two first that God gave me to read for you guys, which is John 14 and John 17. Then um, we'll read 15 and, and 16 because the um, you guys know the phone is only going to give me so much time. Um, like I said, we did do a John series. So if you want to check it out and you haven't, you can. We also did some other videos with us reading this, but they were just different um, messages and points. I'm just going to title this, um, like the chapters pretty much. So I'm going to read John 14. So for you that's saying, well, why won't you just read it straight through? The first two main chapters that I felt led to read for you guys, particularly for this video, is John 14 and 17. I'm going to also read 15 and 16, but I want to read these two first, just in case of the video cuts off. You guys can go back and listen to the other series when we read it fully and you guys got these two points first. So usually I try to read it just in order, but this is what I'm hearing for today. So we're going to talk about um, Jesus comforts his disciples. Um, God wants you guys to be at peace, to be encouraged. Amen. So Jesus comforts his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Are you trusting God? Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. So we're talking about now Jesus, the way to the father. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know. Or if you have really known me, like in the footnotes, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? And guys, when I'm pausing, sometimes I know some people are probably like, why are you pausing? Sometimes I'm thinking about something or something is coming to me or I'm looking at another scripture, but I'm, I'm still here with y'all. So for those that like sometimes with the pauses, different things be coming to me. OK, so Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the father and that the father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the father and the father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that... The son may bring glory to the father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So now we're talking about Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, you will obey what I command and I will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Or you see what it's saying in the footnotes too. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I'm in my Father and you are in me and I'm in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace, because that's what we're talking about this month, specifically peace and prosperity. But peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. That's a word for someone. Put that down in your journal on a sticky note. Write a message to yourself on your, your phone or your iPad or someplace that you can see that and look at that every day and speak that over yourself. John 14, 27. Okay, you heard me say, I am going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold on me. The prince of this world talking about Satan, the devil, right? He has no hold on me, and someone need to confess that. He ain't have no hold on Jesus. You belong to Jesus. He don't have no hold on you either. But the world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. Okay, so that's John 14. Just a quick recap. Um, Jesus comforts his disciples. Jesus the way to the Father. And Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. We're going to come back to um, um, 15 and 16. But let's go to um, 17. Jesus prays for himself. After Jesus said this, he looked down and we're going to talk about what it's talking about. Um, like I said, we've, we've done this teaching a lot before. But um, if you go back in 16, which we're going to do in a few minutes after we read 15, it's talking about the work of the Holy Spirit and the disciples grief is going to turn to joy. So it's leading up now to 17. So let's just read this. So Jesus prays for himself. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. Because this is what he said in 33. Let me just give you 33 because I don't like reading things out of context. But for you that haven't read it, um, just so you get a better understanding, I'm going to just give you 33, John 16, 33. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed. And he also said other things to them as well. But So, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you for you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life. Somebody say eternal life to all those who to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world began. So now Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you. Um, I'm going to just show y'all the footnotes so y'all can see what it's talking about. Okay. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me. And they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction. So that scripture will be fulfilled. And we know, you know, he was talking about, right? I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. That's a word for someone. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world in any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Let me just leave it on here for a few seconds for somebody. I feel like that is a word for someone. Just leave it on here real quick. And then we're going to go to Jesus Christ for all believers. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you and me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Amen. So now, now we're going to go to John 15 and then we're going to do 16. So John 15 is, let's, let's do first the vine and the branches. Okay. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes or cleans. Y'all see in the footnote so that it will be even more fruitful you are already clean because of the word i've spoken to you remain in me and i will remain in you no branch can bear fruit by itself it must remain in the vine neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me i am the vine you are the branches if a man remains in me and i am him he will bear much fruit excuse me guys apart from me you can do nothing if anyone does not remain in me he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers such branches are picked up thrown into the fire and burned if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask whatever you wish and it will be given you this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing your yourselves to be my disciples and happy palm sunday to all glory to god may we go deeper this week um also in our prayers our praise and worship, our sowing, our love, um, the fruits of the spirit, our Bible reading, our confessing, the mission and assignment that God has given each and every one of us to do. And um, that God just continue to individually and corporately bless us and keep us in him. In Jesus name. Amen. That's what we were talking about um, this morning service um, online in my, the church that I attend. They were talking about Palm Sunday and some other notes. Um, they weren't talking about any of this that we talk about today on the videos. But um, they were just Palm Sunday and um, the, the palm branches and Jesus and all that. So I just wanted to say that with you guys, even though you guys are going to get this video the next day. But still, the word still applies. So um, where am I? So let me just go back up to seven. So if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. That's a word for somebody too. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. See, you a friend of God, right? I've called you friends for everything that I learned from my father. I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. Love each other love each other so now let's talk about um i gotta put that pin over there the world hates the disciples okay if the world hates you keep in mind that it hated me first if you belong to the world it would love you as its own as it is you do not belong to the world but i have chosen you out of the world that is why the world hates you remember the words i spoke to you no servant is greater than his master that's john 13 16 here if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. 
If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done it among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason or without cause. That's Psalms 35, which we just read this today. Um, Psalms 35, 19, and it's also Psalms 69, 4. We didn't read Psalms 69, 4, but we did read Psalms 35 today in our Psalms Bible study. So when the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth who goes out from the father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning. So we're going to close John 16. I'm so thankful that I was able to read all of these because I know usually when we have a lot to read, I have to come back and do another video. So I thank God that we was able to read all this in one setting today. So um, John 16. Wait, let me get some water, guys. So I don't have to pause the video. One second, please. All right, so John 16, all this I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. And we talked about that with other um, videos and Bible references as well, right? So they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. So let's talk about now the work of the Holy Spirit. Now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I've said these things. Sorry, guys, that's a sprinkle outside. Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt. And that's what it's talking about in the footnotes. In regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I'm going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Somebody say that all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. In a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. So now let's talk about the disciples grief will turn to joy. Some of his disciples said to one another, what does he mean by saying in a little while you will see me no more? And then after a little while, you will see me. And because I'm going to the father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he's saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while you will see me no more? And then after a little while you will see me. I tell you the truth. You will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. And that's a word for somebody. Your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. And that's a word for somebody. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my father because we know he spoke a lot in parables, right? And that day you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the father on your behalf. 
No, the father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the father. Then Jesus' disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech, or you're not speaking in parables, basically. Now, we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You believe at last, Jesus answered. Or do you now believe? It's another notification, okay. So, but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone for my father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Somebody say peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So as we close, we're going to do a recap from John 14 of what we read, just um, the highlighted sections pretty much to 17 so that someone, you know, in case you want to take notes and you could just be encouraged what God is saying to you. So John 14, we talked about Jesus comforts his disciples. Jesus, the way to the father. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. In 15, we talked about the vine and the branches. The world hates the disciples. 16, it continued on from 15 and it also talked about the work of the Holy Spirit. The disciples' grief will turn to joy. And then 17, we talked about Jesus prays for himself. Jesus prays for his disciples. Jesus prays for all believers. And I just bless you all right now today in Jesus' name. I'm daily praying for you. I love you guys. Thanks for joining and tuning in. And you guys be blessed.